By now, you have surely seen some of the lowlights from the opening meeting of the new House Subcommittee on the Weaponization of Government yesterday, a show that was so lackluster that Fox News didn't even take it live. Ouch. Of course, it was a kind of grab bag of Fox News-style grievance, though a poorly produced one. At the heart of all this, though, there is an actual threat, and it's that Republicans use this committee to essentially interfere with ongoing criminal investigations of the ex-president. That's the danger the subcommittee's ranking member, Stacey Plaskett, laid out. I suspect much of the investigations the majority, my Republican colleagues, want to look into and potentially muck up involve criminal investigations into former President Donald Trump. I want to be crystal clear. My Democratic colleagues and I will resist any attempt by this subcommittee to derail ongoing legitimate investigations into President Trump, any other president, and others within his orbit. During the course of this subcommittee's work, I suspect we will hear both members and witnesses describe the events of January 6, 2021, in ways that simply do not mesh with reality. And Congresswoman Stacey Plaska, Democrat representing the U.S. Virgin Islands, joins me now. She served as a House manager in the second impeachment trial of Donald Trump. She's the ranking member on that committee. It's good to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. How would you describe, if you were having a conversation with a uh, constituent mm -hmm. uh, in St. Croix, and they said, um, what's the deal with this committee? What would be your, like, 60-second, 30-second version of what this committee is? Sure. That this committee is the Republican Party's attempt to utilize the congressional process to air previous grievances and to set the stage of, for conspiracy theories for the 2024 election. That's fully what it is to you. That's exactly what this is. There is, you know, I, I was I was struck yesterday by how, why, there was like, Ron they Johnson was mad place. about ivermectin, yes. Yes. Um, which was the, you know, the, the, the tapeworm drug mm -hmm. that a bunch of conservatives got super upset uh, into for prescribing off-label for COVID. And then Tulsi Gabbard was talking about wokeism. I, 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 but I, <laughs> it was a little unclear, like, what's the actual thing here? Well, in this hearing, I, I couldn't figure it out myself because they talked, to, oh, they talked about the Twitter, Twitter files, right? Yes, they did. Which is their new thing, uh, the new rabbit hole that they want everyone to go down into. Uh, Grassley was talking about Hunter Biden and his laptop, mm -hmm. and that kept being repeated throughout the hearing. It is every grievance, every conspiracy theory that the GOP has being brought out and kind of offered up for their audience to say, which one of these would you like us to go into for the next two years? So you pointed out in the clip we just played of a real, a, a possible threat, right? Which yes. is essentially using it as a tool of essentially obstruction. Mm -hmm. um, this is the Washington Post reporting on some of the requests that are made to the Justice Department that Jim Jordan, who chairs the committee, uh, requests the Justice Department include and ask for documents and information related to the court authorized search of Mar-a-Lago, which also was executed as part of the ongoing probe into the former president's mishandling of classified information. What you're a member of Congress, right? So you understand these sort of branch equities, mm -hmm. which is that you don't want the executive just telling Congress to like go take a long walk of a short pier. At the same time, it does seem important to protect the integrity of the investigations. How do you square that tension? Sure, of course. Us lawyers talk about this notion of accommodation, where Congress will request information, and the executive branch, whichever branch it is, will say, let's see how we can give this to you, and then block off areas and say, you know, we're actually doing an investigation on this. This is a criminal matter. Might we just inform you of where we are? And after the criminal matter has been resolved, or reaches a head, then we will brief you in full on that particular matter. Now, Jim Jordan has not bothered with any of that. As opposed to, and my understanding is, that was something that the January 6th committee, other oversight committees under Democrats' control did do. There was quite a bit of attempts at accommodation before they got to subpoenas, generally. Definitely. And that's how Congress has operated up until this group of individuals that we have that are on the, you know, within the first month of Congress, he's issuing subpoenas. And what he is saying is, oh, well, we were looking into this for the last two, three years. That does not mean that you can then all of a sudden, as soon as you grab the gavel, just throw out subpoenas willy-nilly. Like, that doesn't have any import to it.